Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here are your hosts, Tom and Holly Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. All right, I'm Tom Vassell and this is Holly. And it's been a while since we've done a regular segment of the Dice Tower video show. And today, I want to talk about something that's interesting. I often get a lot of emails from people saying, have you ever thought about designing your own game? And the answer is yes. And here it is. Now, I guess that I don't have maybe the same creative drive as other people. Uh, I've never really felt like I had to design a game, mostly because there's 10,000 plus games out there that are certainly worth looking at. And with all these other games to play, why make my own? Uh, certainly not to make money, because as you might know, Making money in the board game business is a very small thing. In fact, making and designing your own board game, if you publish it yourself, you could end up losing money. So I designed this game, oh, I don't know, back in 2005 or 2006. Sent out emails, had some people play test it. People liked it. Showed it to a few companies. Uh, they weren't very interested. One of the companies suggested a few changes, which I made. I showed it to a couple other companies recently, and they made some suggestions, which I did not take. But I thought I would show it to you here, just to... Well, show you what I came up with, explain a little bit about the game, and hey, maybe you're a publisher watching this and you want to publish it yourself. But if not, no big deal. This is more of a hobby to me than anything else. So I use a regular checkerboard for the basically prototype of my game. I'm not going to put a lot of effort into making it look super nice until we have all the kinks worked out, but I thought a checkerboard worked, and my goal of this game was to make it so that you could play it with multiple players. Something I wanted to play with two to six players. And when you play with two to six players, you're going to need uh, basically 60 cards because there's a 60, a 60 card deck can be split by two players into 30 cards each. Uh, you can split it in by three players into 20, four players into 15, five players into 12, and six players into 10. So in this game, it's, it was, I was gonna make a tile laying game and I wanted to have 60 tiles, but this checkerboard has 64. So to counteract that problem, I came up with four different tiles that I used. I, and I'm, I'm stealing tiles from all kinds of things. I stole these tiles here from a horrible, horrible game called Fossil. And these tiles are placed on the board in various spots. Basically, I call them rocks. They're blocking different spots. And now there are 60 open spaces on the board. The perfect uh, number of people to play with. I think that games should revolve around a theme and although my game is fairly abstract in one sense the theme came up first and for me the theme was about some kind of wars. I wanted to have wars where players were putting down tiles that were attacking other tiles on the board to some degree and I thought about insects and I thought about fish and this came out a while ago and so there have been other fish games on the market but Fish Wars was one of the working titles for the game as was Vicious, Vicious Fishes Either, either title works fine. So I found some Microsoft clip art and printed out things and put them on more of these same fossil tiles. And just I printed them out on uh, paper that was self-adhesive, so that made it a whole lot easier. I just printed them out and then pasted them on it. Sure, they don't look very good, but good enough to be able to play the game. So what I did with this game is I made various colors of fish, red, green, yellow, blue, black and white, six different colors of fish, and put different numbers on these fish from one to eight. Now some of the fish, I made uh, octopuses, and octopuses are unique in that they attack from all uh, directions. So they can affect all eight squares around them, while most fish can simply just attack in a direction that they're facing. Although there are a few fish, double fish I call them, that attack in two different directions. And you can also see that some fish are multiple colors. The basic gist of the game was this. This is a pond that we are seeding with fish, and you will have a certain color of fish that you want to basically win this war. You want your breed of fish to be the best breed. And there's also a certain breed of fish that you don't like. Now, there were various ways that I did, fooled around with this, but the best way I found was having players draw from a deck of cards. So, for example, this player might get a card that says black and green. So they want the black, and they want the green fish to do well. They're rooting for two different colors. And then they will either be against the green or yellow fish. Their choice, however, in this instance, 
the black and green in here is on the same card, so they can't hate green, so they have to hate yellow. So they're for black and green, and they're against yellow. And then the game simply proceeds in this manner. On a player's turn, they will have a handful of tiles that they've drawn from the bag, and they will place one of these tiles anywhere they want on the board. If they place a tile so that it is greater than a fish that it's attacking, so let's say for example, this white fish here attacks the yellow fish, the yellow fish has then been eaten. And so wherever that is on the board, a white fish was the one who ate the yellow fish, so on top of the yellow fish, we put a white piece. And I'm using meeples that I pulled from another game uh, that I don't play anymore also. And so the white fish gets, basically white has one point in this regard. Now bigger fish may require more, multiple people attacking. Maybe this octopus is attacking this red fish here. So he's attacking it for three, and then another yellow fish comes in from behind. Seven plus three is ten. Now they have captured and killed this fish. And since it's an eight fish, which are harder to kill, they get two points for that. Seven and eight fishes are worth two points when they're killed. Every other fish is worth one point. And you can even throw down a fish deliberately just to have it killed. Let's say there's a seven fish here. I throw down this octopus. The octopus instantly kills this other octopus next to it because it's only a three. So then red would get a point. But because I put this octopus directly in front of this yellow fish, it also dies and yellow gets a point. Obviously then, a fish with a value of 7 is going to be worth more than a fish of value 1, but not necessarily, because if you manage to get a fish in such a position and place other fish so that there's really no way for this fish to be killed, and you can prove that by saying, okay, there's no possible way to put a fish down at this point where this number 1 fish can be killed, at this point, that fish is basically surviving. And every fish that survives in this game also gets a token put on top of it. Now, a one or two fish, because it's so difficult for them to survive, they get two tokens. So at the end of the game, when there are 60 fish tiles placed on the board, every tile will have a token placed on it. If it has been eaten by another fish, it will have a token of that fish's color placed on it. If it survives and no fish has eaten it, it will have a token of its color placed on it. So then at the end of the game, you simply do some math here. I add up all the black tokens and all the green tokens, and subtract all the yellow tokens, and that's my final score. And if I fail to mention this, these cards are secret, so no one knows what cards anyone else has. Although during the course of the game, you may figure out, obviously, what colors other players are. And that's basically the gist of the game. Now, there's a few little things I've run into. For example, the cards need to be different for a different number of players. You don't want to have it where everybody is rooting for the same color. That's not too hard to, to figure out. Also making the fish values work so that you know a fish aren't dying every single turn. So I, I've done a little bit of fooling with the math. But I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. And it does seem to be very enjoyable. Seems to be best with three, four, five, or six players. Although six player game you don't have as much control. But it's a very fast game. Takes maybe 20, 25 minutes. I think the theme is there. I think the gameplay is okay, and maybe someone will pick it up. Now you might be wondering why I'm even showing you this game, considering that no publisher has picked it up. Some people might say, well, your ideas might be stolen. Well, first of all, that doesn't really happen very often in the board game industry, because I've shown this on the internet that it's an idea that I've come up with. But secondly, who cares? It's not really that big of a deal. Well, I wasn't going to make any, much money on the game anyway if it was ever produced. Uh, I guess the neatest thing would just be seeing my name on a box, but I wanted to make a fun game. See, honestly, I like this game, I think it's fun, but I don't think it's the greatest game I've ever made, or ever played. Uh, other people are much better designers than me. I just think it's a solid, good, light filler game. Finding the pieces, of course, that's why I save tiles and cards from other games. The cards are from the extra blank cards I got in Cosmic Encounter. The tiles are from a game called Fossil. The meeples are from a game called Barcelona. Uh, I, I tend to keep pieces from different games, and you never know, use them for a board like this. The board is a uh, well, checkerboard. Uh, but that's just the prototype. No one ever produces it, that's fine. Will I play it with my f friends and family? Ah, occasionally. But since I'm such a big component person, I want to see really nice production. It kind of irks me to see this Microsoft uh, Word art on here. And yes, the theme is interchangeable. You could change it to something else. I just thought the idea of, of seeding a pond with a fish that you want to survive in that pond uh, would be the best bet. And also, I like the octopus being able to attack in every direction. But other than that, who knows? 
Will this game become a super popular hit? Probably not. But you've just watched it, and maybe you, you're interested in it. Uh, then email me, and I can send you a copy of the rules that I have. And maybe I, I think I can send you a, a, some files with the pieces. You can print it out and play it yourself. Or not. Watch my next reviews for a really good game. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Holly. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.